I just turned 25 years old and I wanted to showcase 25 different cards from my own personal collection. These cards aren't the most valuable, but they are some of my favorites. Let's take a look at it. We're gonna start off with this triple thread. So we have Bonds, Josh Gibson, and Albert Pools. Now you know Barry Bonds and Pools sit over 700 home runs, but it's rumored that Josh Gibson did as well. Because of the record keeping, it's not sure how many the Josh Gibson actually hit, but he was the home run king of the Negro Leagues. And because of the rumor slash myth, everyone on this card had over 700 home runs, which is really cool. When I first bought this card, I was prospecting on Albert Pools to hit that 700 home run club. I knew it was gonna be a stretch with his final season, but he was able to achieve it. And I think this is a really, really cool card in my collection. And it's honestly my favorite Jersey card. Up next, we have this Nap Lajoie 1905 postcard. Now, I don't really collect postcards, but when I saw this at the card show, I decided that I had to pick this one up. Now, this has the same imagery as his T206, and often when I go to a show, there's not a card that I stare at for like over a few minutes and ponder like, I need to purchase this card. There's very few of these that are actually great. This card isn't full size. Part of it is cut off here at the bottom. It does make it a little bit more aesthetic. And on the back, there's this huge black splotch all over here, but still good luck finding one of these copies. We have a really important boxing card and this has James Corbett and also John Sullivan. Now, if you don't know the history behind it to these fighters, Corbett was a very scientific boxer, whereas Sullivan was just a heavy dude and focus on beating up opponents. This also was one of the most important fights in the 1800s. This was the first one that John Sullivan actually lost. And you guys can see a little bit more information about over here, won by Corbett. This purse was $25,000 back then, which is a lot of money today. Red Cross, long tobacco, beautiful in the front, a little bit of paper loss on the back for that 1.5 grade, but I've chased this card for such a while and it's a really, really cool part of my boxing collection. 1984 Iron Maiden rookie card. This is actually pasted in an album. I do have this card with its original back, but I just wanted to show you guys what it looks like within this album. Extremely tough to find from Brazil. And I also have their other 1984 Maiden, and it's graded an eight or a nine, which is the highest graded, but it's a lot easier to find it than this one itself. And you guys can see some of the individual band rookies. Another band rookie, this is Metallica from 1986. They have an 84, but it's just of an album instead of the pictures of the band members themselves. Again, I have this card with the full back attached and you guys can see the crease. Every single card that came in a larger sticker like this was creased in half to put in a pack so that way cards like this could fit in. But ton of rookies and another big integral part of my rock and metal PC. Baseball card wise, this is a T213 Ty Cobb. The image looks identical to his T206, but these are from Coupon Cigarettes. Now they made three different types of coupons. I'll show you guys that on the screen here. You guys can see the back. This is almost gone. I know it is in really, really poor condition, but the pop on these are much, much tougher to find than your standard T206. I wanted to have a Cobb in my collection. I had the opportunity to purchase this one for about the same price as a T206 came up as, and I decided that I had to grab this. This is actually one of my favorite non-sports cards. I think this might be my only non-living subject that I have in my PC, and this is of the Statue of Liberty. This is actually the first image to my knowledge of the Statue of Liberty produced on a card, which I guess there's a lot of objects out there, but for America, this is our most important symbol. And what's really cool on this one too, is it's an Allen & Ginter, but kind of looks like an old judge. Now this wasn't graded because there's a rip right over here. You guys can see how it goes through there. And the card was skinned. But either way, once you start getting into mid grades, these are very expensive and good luck finding. This is an 1899 Ogden of Victor Trumper. Now your typical Ogden is a black bordered card. These are actually white and extremely scarce. You can find both cricketers and also golfers within this set. I thought this five looked really fantastic and I believe it's the highest graded between PSA and SGC. Trumper, one of the best cricket players, extremely famous, as well as helping bring rugby over to Australia. So something that was really, really cool. Another early pre-war card, this is of old Tom Morris, who helped design some golf courses and build out the modern rules of today. 
This is a three. I actually have a Hilton as well in this set that is a three. There's a few others that I eventually need to get and upgrade within it too, but 50 card set. Not everyone that was in this Copes Golf set was a individual. There's a lot of just vague golf terms in it, but it's really, really cool. There's also some cards that are narrow cut. Don't know the specifics behind them, but they are much tougher. Now this is a 1992 Nirvana. And this, in my opinion, this is one of the most important music cards out there because it features two rookies. You have Dave Grohl and also Kurt Cobain. You guys can see them in the back over here. Now these are extremely tough condition sensitive because of the colored borders over here. And actually a lot of the backs were removed. And I know it says do not grade. I just built out a full researched article on the set. I actually talked to a Finnish collector that has the full set as well. These were apparently one per pack. They were distributed by Leaf in Janky Gum. And each pack also had one piece of gum. The packs had multiple different designs. So hopefully this can end up being graded in the future. Again, very tough. And also a lot of these plates here at the bottom were removed. Another music card that I've recently researched, this is a 2002 Coachella of the Foo Fighters. This is in really, really good shape. Now at the time, Foo Fighters were not a headliner. You guys can see that they're in the second row. Actually, Oasis headlined 2002. But here's the history about these cards. These were kind of like promo cards that they handed out just to show who was on the lineup for each specific day. Not really meant to be kept or collected. No one going to the music festival is gonna bring a penny sleeve and also a top loader to protect these cards. So most of these were actually thrown away and you know, if someone put it in their pocket or put it in a bag, they're gonna be damaged pretty much. But you guys can see, especially with the colored borders too on this example, it looks really, really nice. There is no creases on it. Foo Fighters does have another 2002 rookie from Brazil to my knowledge. I think I have it in my PC with the back, which again, very, very tough to find, but I like this one better as it has the whole band rather than an album cover. This is an Eddie Shore 1933 Sports Kings. This set is really, really cool because it has multiple different sports represented into it. And it's also a Gaudi release. To find a seven is phenomenal. You guys can see how sharp this card is. And Eddie Shore, to my knowledge, is like a top 25 hockey player. And it's also his rookie card. So this does have a little bit of staining on the back, but man, the presentation wise and the colors on this are extremely rich. ROO. This is the Japanese Home Run King, and this looks very similar to a T206 Red Ty Cobb. When I first saw this at the Dallas Card Show, I knew I had to have it into my PC, and I was able to make a deal for it. You guys can see on the back over here as well. From at least basic elementary research, I believe all these have glue stains on the back and that these were also hand cut. So I think that's why there's an A, because of this hand cut over here. Not too certain on that side of things, which is very limited information about Japanese cards over here in America. And that's a whole subsection that I do want to research one day. This took a few years to find, but this is a 1993 Masters of Pearl Jam. This is an Italian card. There's a black border, but also this is very, very thin, kind of like a Propaganda's Montiel. Now this one has multiple creases throughout the card, but good luck really finding a high grade example or even finding this card at, at all. But I think this looks really, really good in the SGC Tux, which should say as well, we're official group subbers. So if you guys need to get any of your cards graded, make sure to hit up our website and fill that out. We show every single card that has been graded on our YouTube channel as well. So this is a T206 Walter Johnson, a little bit of a scarcer back. It's the overprint edition. And what's kind of cool is it also has this collector stamps over here. I don't know the history about these stamps. I know there's a guy on this channel that watches the videos if you do know about these two stamps, please let me know. I'd love to learn a little bit about the history on them, if there's any value added on them. But really, really cool Walter Johnson. And it was nice to have a little bit of a scarcer back as my first example. I'm showing you guys this as a placeholder because I actually have a nine on this Led Zeppelin, but it's in my PWCC vault. It's lucky enough to win an auction recently on it, but this eight still looks really nice. I also have the rarer back version of this as well. I think there's three backs in general, but I have two different examples within my PC, but an eight and a nine of your standard back on it. Not the first Led Zeppelin card, but in my opinion, it's the most iconic. I'm not a huge fan of the circle from 1970. So this is a John Dillinger G-Men. Now the, the normal G-Men isn't really expensive. It's not too scarce of a card, although four is a pretty good grade. However, this is actually a French G-Men. You guys can see this over here. And I didn't even know these existed. When I saw this, I had to make a play on it. They are extremely scarce, 
but I just don't have too much information. This was produced by Gum Inc., which would end up making the play ball baseball cards between 39 and 41. So if you guys have seen the video on our channel with the interview with Orlando, I actually made a trade with him at the National for this Buffalo Bill. And the colors on this card, the picture, it's just so iconic. It's one of my favorite cards in my PC. And the Goodwin Champs is such a fun set. So W590 cards are tough to find, but Jack Johnson itself has a pop of less than 10. I think it's like five or six in general between PSA and also SJC. This was actually a card show find. Lucky enough, my friend Gatlin was able to pick this up for me at the National the day before I got there. But this is a really, really cool example. And I had to show Jack Johnson on the video. I have a few of his others as well, but this definitely is my rarest within my collection. This was the boxer that kind of like inspired Jack Johnson, his idol, Peter Jackson. This is an 1890 Mayo's Cup plug. Although I believe this could actually be an 1890 through 1894 release or something like that because I have a one of these cards that's stamped with 1894 copyright on the front, something I wanna deep dive more into in the future. Regardless though, I have two Peter Jacksons. I have one, I think his name's here at the bottom and that's in a four, but I had the three readily available. So I decided to share that one for you guys in the video. This is Edgar Allan Poe's first card, 1888 Dukes N76s. So, really really cool in person the video does not do it justice and edgar Allan poe has influenced a lot of like rock and metal bands and writers in general and a lot of horror movies this is my joe lewis rookie it's not his rarest rookie by any means but a seven is a phenomenal grade eventually want to get the mini in my pc which is way tougher to find which by the way if you guys see any joe lewis cards that say before 1935 those dates are way off there's some that are labeled as 1930 or 32 i think and he was even a professional boxer at that time. This is my most valuable and rarest boxing card. This is a 1910 Red Sun Cigarettes of Sam Langford. Now this was a regional release in New Orleans. You guys can see the back over here. It is These are stunning in person, by the way, but definitely his rarest card, and these just do not pop up often. There hasn't been a public sale in over 10 years, and I had the opportunity to buy one. Had to do it. Many consider the Jack Johnson from the set one of the most important boxing cards ever produced. And Sam Langford is definitely the second best boxer. Some may argue Sam Langford's a better boxer than Jack Johnson, but Jack Johnson's extremely popular. It's like the Mickey Mantle of boxing cards. Langford, in my opinion, would be kind of like a Willie Mays. Another boxing card, we have the John L. Sullivan N28 from Allen and Ginter. Eventually, I want to get this into an SGC slab, but really, really nice example over here. Stuff has appreciated quite a bit over the last two or so years and was really happy to grab this one for my PC. Kind of an oddball card over here, but this is a 1937 John Wayne. He doesn't really have many cards that are in the 30s. I know for sure this isn't his first example, but this is the best looking 1930s cards. I know John Wayne is extremely popular, especially a lot among cinema lovers, but when I saw this, I think it was on a Twitter sales thread, I had to pick it up and there isn't really many images of this card online. And we're gonna end it off on this Ben Franklin 1887 Loan Jack Inventors. I'm building the set. Hopefully I can finish the set within the next five or so years, but these cards are beautiful. It's my favorite set of all time. And the imagery is very reminiscent of the Goodwin Champs with just how nice these look in person. Now this is a three. You guys can see the back over here. I almost put my Thomas Edison in place of this Benjamin Franklin, but this presents way, way nicer. Hope you guys enjoyed it, and I'll definitely be making another recap video at the end of this year with probably the top 100 cards within my collection.